The amount of Xbox Game Studios increased significantly with the acquisition of Bethesda Zenimax and the latest edition of Activision Blizzard. But Team Xbox did not only acquire a lot of developers and game IPs, but along with them, they also acquired a lot of technology. And that's why in today's video we are going to take a deeper look into the available game engines in the Xbox roster. What are the strengths and weaknesses of all these engines and where can developers benefit from synergies by sharing engines and technology? Hello gamers from around the world, this is Boxenberger, the video game enthusiast from Germany with an Xbox tech focused video on all the available game engines in Microsoft's gaming division after the acquisition of Activision Blizzard has officially gone through. And as always I will try to break the tech talk down into understandable words and before we start you should treat yourself and set your player to full 4K 60fps and while you're at it it would be awesome of you to consider to also hit the like and subscribe button and maybe even turn on the notification bell to not miss out on future content. Okay, thank you guys, you are awesome and now let's look at all the game engines that Xbox has now under their roof. Let us start with some first person shooter engines, because Xbox owns now some of the most popular first person shooters in the world, with Call of Duty, Halo, Doom etc etc. The thing is that today all these shooters run on different engines, so let's break them down. Halo Infinite launched last December running on a brand new engine called the Slipspace engine. This engine was heavily advertised over the course of the development of the game as being one of the most advanced game engines out there. Well and when Halo Infinite finally came out, we gamers were able to experience this engine first hand. And while Halo Infinite is definitely a beautiful game, it is also not the most mind blowing thing we have ever seen in gaming. The engine itself definitely has a lot of potential. We have seen for instance some amazing texture work in that game. High resolution textures and 3D geometry on a lot of surfaces delivered a great looking game and it's sometimes hard to distinguish what is actually coming from the engine's capability and what is a choice in art style. A couple of things we can notice is that the game engine is definitely optimized for performance. The game runs in 4K 60fps and has even 120 frames per second mode, of course with a lower resolution. To achieve that, the Slipspace engine heavily relies on variable rate shading, which is a technology that prioritizes certain pixels in an image. Of course, every technology like this comes with a caveat and in Halo Infinite these artifacts are definitely noticeable. What we have not seen so far in the engine is state of the art technology like ray tracing. 343 talked about adding ray tracing support after the launch of Halo Infinite but it's gotten really quiet around that so all we can do at the moment is to assume that the engine will be updated to support stuff like ray tracing. And that brings me to another engine that is now owned by Xbox through the acquisition of Bethesda Cinemax and that is the ITTEC engine. The latest iteration ITTEC 7 was introduced with Doom Eternal and the engine is arguably the most advanced first person shooter engine out there. The game engine supports basically all state of the art technologies like ray tracing, volumetric rendering of fog, dynamic global illumination, high resolution textures, variable rate shading etc etc. And all that is constantly optimized for performance. Doom Eternal runs on ultra settings on the Xbox Series X at 4K 60fps with ray tracing on or at 120 frames at dynamic 1080p without ray tracing, which is super impressive. The only drawback of this engine is probably its net code. While it supports online gaming, there are probably other game engines that handle the netcode thing better, but since even head of Xbox Phil Spencer knows that this engine is very capable, his vision is to expand the collaborations through all these new studios. Let's hear what he had to say on it tech. Uh, and then when you think about their capability and I think about them collaborating and working and talking with the coalition and 343 and just like the first person shooter, third person shooter space that we have. Uh, the studios that are there, I think just kind of an amazing capability. The other thing I get really excited about with id that we haven't really talked a lot about is the future of id tech and what could that mean inside of Xbox. So there you go. As of right now, obviously games like Halo Infinite are supported by 343's own engine, but the leadership team at Xbox is very well aware that the most capable shooter engine is it tech. And that's why it's only a matter of time until we see synergies in between those studios. And now we bring in the discussion of the biggest shooter IP in the world and that is Call of Duty, which belongs now also to Team Xbox. Call of Duty runs on the Infinity Ward engine, which was built in 2005 based on, guess which engine? Exactly, the it tech 
Tech engine. Back in the days obviously it was the iteration 3 of that engine and ever since the Infinity Ward engine got a lot of overhauls and the latest games like Call of Duty Vanguard or Modern Warfare ran on the Infinity Ward engine 8.0. Now given that the development of an engine is a hard and very expensive undertaking, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Team Xbox consolidating all these efforts that are now going on under their roof across 3 for 3 Industries, all the Call of Duty studios and of course it tech. Definitely exciting times ahead but let's move on and look at some engines outside of the shooter space and move into the world of racing games. Forza is Xbox powerhouse racing franchise and for the motorsport series the developer Turn 10 is currently working on a complete new engine for their upcoming games. We have only seen in-engine trailers not gameplay yet but they have talked a lot about the engine and that it will make full use of direct storage which allows them to load in-game assets into the memory pool really quickly, they will support sampler feedback streaming and additionally they will use a lot of DirectX 12 Ultimate features like ray tracing. Since racing games are typically very performance oriented, we can assume that all these features will at least be supported at 60 FPS in the upcoming Forza Motorsport and they have said that one of the main focus of this engine is the reduction of input latency to get the most responsive gaming experience. The real interesting part of this engine is of course not only how it's going to improve upon the already great looking Forza Horizon 5 which ran on their old Forza engine but it is also going to be used in the upcoming action RPG Fable from Playground Games. This is the first time that I can think of that a racing game engine is used in an open world action RPG and that just tells you that this game engine is very flexible because it not only supports the very direct rendering pipeline of a racing game but also things like indoor renders, character animations etc etc. And speaking of RPG engines, Bethesda Studios is going to release Starfield in November this year and this will be an open world RPG that is based upon their brand new iteration of the creation engine, the creation engine 2.0. If you remember Skyrim when it came out more than 10 years ago, that game looked really really good for an open world game at its time. Bethesda had multiple iterations of that game engine and games like Fallout 4 for instance ran on those iterations. For Starfield and a bit later they already announced Elder Scrolls 6, Bethesda built for the first time a complete new iteration of its in-house engine. Todd Howard had to say the following about the engine. The creation engine overhaul is the largest we've probably ever had. From rendering to animation to pathing to procedural generation. I don't want to say everything but it's a significant significant overhaul. And the quite interesting thing about this is that Todd Howard mentioned the overhaul of the rendering pipeline and one thing that was heavily advertised in the lead up to the launch of the current gen consoles are mesh shaders. We have not seen mesh shaders in any game so far in action. To implement those into modern game engines you need to completely redesign their rendering pipeline. And I wonder whether Bethesda has gone through this with the iteration and we will see mesh shaders for the first time in action. One thing is sure, the game will only run on current gen hardware because the engine is optimized for a lot of features that are supported by the RDNA2 architecture. And since Xbox is working on a lot of different big RPGs, I wonder if we will see the creation engine being utilized by other Xbox Studios. For instance, we know that Obsidian Entertainment is working on Avowed which will use the Unreal Engine. But given that Unreal is not an Xbox owned engine, they always have to pay big fees to Epic to be able to use that engine. So I wonder if we will see eventually the creation engine in other studios. And speaking of the Unreal Engine, this is probably the most used engine across all Xbox Studios. Ninja Theory is building Hellblade 2 in that engine, The Coalition is building of course Gears of War in Unreal, in Exile, Undead Lab and many others are using Unreal 2. I don't want to go into the capabilities of the Unreal Engine 5 in this video because I have a dedicated video on that. So if you want to learn what makes the Unreal Engine 5 so special, I highly recommend this video. I'll link it in the description down below. I want to talk next about another interesting engine and that is the engine for the upcoming Diablo 4. Diablo 3 ran on a proprietary engine with the convenient name 5.7 LV12 engine. Now since Diablo 3 is already really an old game, Blizzard decided to build a brand new engine for Diablo 4 that has yet to be named. This brand new engine will be a physical based rendering technology which allows them to do 3D sculpting of the landscape, have dynamic lighting especially with the spells and whatnot that will illuminate the surrounding areas realistically and they will focus on the new storage capabilities to have a seamless experience without load times in between dungeons. Here's what the developers had to say on that engine. What that allows us to do is render things in a more realistic way. 
if you're looking at metal skin, blood, fur or hair, it just looks way more real. So I think baseline, the entire game is affected by that. And I wanna again emphasize the possibilities here through collaboration across other Xbox studios that are working on games played from an isometric perspective. Another engine I want to touch on is the Void engine from Arcane Studios. That engine was first introduced with Dishonored 2 and was of course based on the Attack engine. But according to the developers, more than 70% of the engine were reworked to give Arcane their own in-house engine. The Void engine got a significant upgrade with its latest iteration that has been introduced with last year's Deathloop, now supporting state-of-the-art technology like ray tracing, parallax mapping of textures and dynamic global illumination. Many have been wondering why Arcane built their own engine when they had in-house the powerhouse engine it tech and one of the main reasons is definitely their choice of art style and I wanted to mention that here because ever so often certain game engines have a certain look that sometimes doesn't fit the artistic vision of a certain game. By the way the upcoming arcane game Redfall is not going to run on the void engine it has been confirmed it's going to be an Unreal 5 game. Another engine I want to mention here is the Essence engine 5.0 which is used by World's Edge in Age of Empires 4. Now with the acquisition of Activision Blizzard, Xbox owns now a ton of other real-time strategy IPs like StarCraft and WarCraft and it's definitely going to be interesting to see if there will be some sort of overlap or collaboration to make use of the RTS engine owned by Microsoft. Then we have the game Overwatch and we know that Blizzard is already working on an Overwatch 2 and this game is run on their own engine with the editor Ted. There's really not much known about this engine and its strengths and weaknesses. So I wonder if future iterations of Overwatch are going to use one of the aforementioned Xbox first person shooter engines. And last but in no way least I want to briefly talk about some MMO engines in the Xbox roster. Elder Scrolls Online runs on the Hero engine which definitely mimics the look of Elder Scrolls but this engine has a proper netcode because that was the big weakness of games like Fallout 76. This online game was built in the creation engine which did not support a netcode and the developers had to use a very old netcode from Quake to make online features available and we all know how this turned out. But with the Hero Engine, Microsoft owns now a very capable engine optimized for online MMOs and we know that Cinemax Online Studios are already working on a new IP with a new iteration of that engine. But with that I want to come to an end of this video, cause it's already going to take me forever to edit this video. The thing is, Xbox acquired with all the studios over the last years some great IPs and even more technology. Game engines are only one part of this, but it's also motion capture technology, mega scans, audio technology etc etc. From an engine point of view it will be very interesting to see where these studios will find ways to collaborate, share know-how and generate synergies. These collaborations have begun with Bethesda Studios last year and will definitely gain new heights with all the Activision Blizzard Studios once the deal has officially gone through. Be that as it may, there has never been more variety in the Xbox game portfolio and their engine set and this makes the future of all these studios very interesting and the good news is we don't have to wait too long, this year we will see the first of these next gen engines in action. But for now I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did so please do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And if you want to support the channel even further you can now become a channel member and get early access to my videos and custom made badges and emojis that can now be used not just in the comment section but also in my brand new live podcast called The World of Gaming here on YouTube which airs every Thursday 8pm Central Europe time, 2pm Eastern, 7pm UK time. This is a podcast from and with the community discussing discussing all the things that the world of gaming has to offer including games, news and technology. And now let me know in the comments down below what collaborations are you interested in, which engines pique your interest. And besides here on YouTube you can also hit me up on Twitter where I share a lot of opinions and gaming discussions. But for now thank you very much for watching, I see you the next time and game on!